Okay, hey guys, what is up? Welcome to another Cooking with Josh. I'm super excited because today I'm following another one of Josh Weisterman's recipes. His are really, really easy. This is called like the $2 nacho grande and I'm gonna do nacho grande. You guys know me, I just like chicken, cheese, and chips. Keep it simple, but I'm going to be making this also for my husband who loves all the fixings, which is like guacamole, sour cream, corn, all that stuff. So we're changing it up a little bit. I'm gonna be making chicken with mine. It's the same chicken that I make for all my quesadillas and fajitas. So, I mean, I don't know, I'm gonna like show you this. Like, guess, you know what, it's already marinating, so I'll just show you guys the seasoning. All you need for the chicken that I'm doing is ground paprika, cumin, garlic powder, onion powder, oregano, and red chili pepper with some salt, pepper, and olive oil. I leave it in the fridge for like 30 minutes. I'm gonna cook that up first. Joshua Weissman also uses like homemade chips. We just went and got like the freshest chips we could get. And we got these at Pavilion, so we're using this. But I am gonna attempt to make, like I said, the cheese, the guac, all of that stuff. Like I said, he made beef. We're making chicken because it's just, I just like chicken nachos butter. And yeah, I hope this goes very simple because it's like 7.30 at night. It's getting a little late, so start up dinner and get it cooking. Last time I made nachos, it was so horrible. Oh my God, the cheese sauce was so bad. So please pray for me on this cheese sauce. <laughs> I don't know how it's gonna go. So he started with his meat, so I'm starting with my meat. And yeah, I just make my chicken this way. So we cut up cubes of chicken. I do all that seasoning with salt, pepper, olive oil. And yeah, I think it's gonna be really good. So you use for the fajitas and quesadillas. So, kinda cook them for, I don't know, it usually takes like seven to eight minutes with the lid on. But I check it to see if they need to be flipped. But this is such a small amount of chicken, you should make like a lot more. So, I can put them all flat and they will cook evenly. I also have a boiling water with ears of corn. He, uh, well it's not boiling yet, it's starting to boil. He did his over like an open flame, looks scary. So we're not gonna do that, <laughs> but we are gonna do the chicken and the corn and then I'm gonna put my cheese sauce. Once the chicken's done, I'm going to remove it and put it in a bowl and I'm actually gonna use this same pan with the oil and stuff for our cherry tomatoes because those are really the only thing that you need to like saute. I'm gonna just go ahead and move this off, get a bowl, and then do our cherry tomatoes in that. Seasonings and oils in there, I'm going to go ahead and put these tomatoes, and he like sautes them for like a couple minutes back and forth, basically. Um, I've never done these before. So, my little So he kinda just rolls them around until he says they blister. But the seasoning is so good on the chicken, so we like love to put our vegetables and stuff or anything we cook after that in there. All right, it's like a fun little game for a couple minutes. <laughs> okay, there we go. Ah, oh, they're moving. There we go. Move the tomatoes over, and now I'm gonna start the cheese sauce, which was my downfall last time. So we will attempt this again. So, I'm gonna throw in some butter. I had this left over from our last thing, so we're gonna throw in butter with a one and a half tablespoon of flour to make our, I don't know if this is brew, I don't know what this is. So he said a one and a half tablespoons of flour to make this, so we have one, I already like a half. Half. So we're whisking this together, which was never, again, my strong suit. Maybe the butter was supposed to be more melted before I put the flour. Because <laughs> the flour disappeared. I just never quite understand this fully. Because now it's kind of buttery. I don't know if I want buttery nachos. Okay, remove some butter. So I'm gonna put one more tablespoon of flour because I think I removed some of the flour when I removed some of the butter. So now we're gonna try it again. <laughs> Kind of start it over. And now we're gonna whisk that together. And then today's cheese sauce, so like does this part matter? Maybe, <laughs> maybe that's why I was whisk that. Okay. So now I'm going to add in the milk. I have a cup of milk on deck ready to go. And he's gonna mix this until it's pretty thick. And then at the end, he said if the cheese is too thick, then you add more milk. But I remember last time, my problem was it was 
um, it was too runny. So <laughs> I just never mastered cheese sauce and I love cheese sauce. So it's really, really sad for me. But yeah, I think last time I just didn't like let it cook long enough on here either. So I'm trying to get it like all nice and thick. What I noticed in his recipe too, which I'm just noticing now, is he never puts it in the oven. So <laughs> I'm gonna put our cheese and chicken and chips in the oven for like a little bit, but I guess all the garnishes on top are like fresh and cold. All right, we're gonna mix this so it gets like thick and then we'll add the cheese in. Kind of like thickums actually. So maybe the secret to the sauce is doing it thick. So he had some, um, he had some seasoning, it's paprika. I'll just put a little bit in because I don't know, I don't really know. And a little bit of cumin, which is like the spice these days. Everyone's doing the cumin. <laughs> and then we're gonna do a little garlic powder. And whisk that all together. All right, now it's getting thick. Okay, this looks good, okay. So I'm gonna mix all that, whisk it all in. Oh my gosh, it almost looks a little too thick. We might add more milk. Okay. Let's throw in some of the cheeses. That looks good though. All right, let me get the cheese. We have cheddar. Mm, cheddar cheese. And we have American cheese. They had yellow American and white American. We went with the white American. When I was watching his, it kind of actually looks like he might have gone with the yellow American, but hey. I think the white cheese sauce looks a little tastier. So he said if this is too thick to add more milk, which it might already be, surprisingly, because remember last time I had it so runny? Yeah, it's gonna definitely need some more milk. I'm gonna turn this down a little bit. So we're gonna add a little bit more milk. So this can get a cheesy, gooey consistency because he kind of drips it over. Okay, I might need to get a spoon to get that cheese glob out of there. Yeah, it's got to be even more milky. That's so weird how thick it got. Last time it was so thin. This time it's so thick. Alright, so we are going to take the first layer of chips. And we're gonna just do cheese and chicken for the oven and keep it warm and then just do everything on top. He layers his nachos because he never puts it in the oven, which is kind of cool, but until like, because I should have done the toppings and got them prepared first, but that's okay. So we're gonna just, and then we're gonna warm up the nachos because I don't, you know, he made his fresh, but it seems complicated. All right. So we got our chips. And now we are going to ladle on our cheese, which looks, oh God, this looks so good. <gasps> All right. Wow. Oh my gosh, that cheese looks so phenomenal. Mm. Okay, yeah, I can literally just dip my chips in this and be good. So I'm gonna save a little bit for the top, but we have quite a bit, so. Wow. The thing with restaurant nachos is they are so chintzy on cheese. And you're just like, where is that cheese at though? I'm gonna put one more ladle on because it will have plenty for the top. Alright. Mmm. Mmm mmm mmm. That looks so so freaking good. Alright. Now let's go on with our chicken. Put this over here. I'm gonna sprinkle on some chicken. So yeah, this is kind of the cool part is the layering. So, save more for the top. Oh my gosh. This looks amazing. I am so excited. Okay. We're gonna obviously build with toppings and stuff, so. I'm gonna just do this. Mm. Yummy! And layer up the cheese again. Mm -mm -mm. 
This will definitely be better than the restaurants, I will tell you that, because the cheese smells so good. It's so fresh. It doesn't get that like plasticky on it. So I want to keep them nice and warm because I want to have this freshness. When it comes out, mmm. Wow. So we can put a few things into the oven. So we're gonna put obviously more chicken on here. And again, we get to layer on the chicken because I do feel like they skip on chicken at the restaurants. So we're gonna put chicken there. I'm gonna try and get chicken on every bite. All right, oh my God. Wow. All right, we're gonna put more chicken on, but now we're gonna put some tomatoes. He just puts these tomatoes on whole, and I think they'll taste really good on the in the oven because they'll be nice and roasty, toasty. So we're kind of sporadically putting them in. So those stay nice and warm too because we cooked these a while ago. So yeah. And I think it just gives good flavor too. Even if you don't like love tomatoes, like eating them by the whole, like putting them on the dish, I think gives a really good flavoring. And you know what, why not? We'll put one here, that's where it wanted to land. And then we'll do another one here. And maybe here. Okay, and then we'll put a little bit of, you know what, Saddle Ranch puts corn on their nachos, and he does too, so we're gonna just, we're gonna just do a little corn in there. <laughs> Make it fancy. We did a fresh ears of corn, which we just eat sometimes by itself because we love corn. It's so good. I think when this melts in the nachos, it's going to be so delish. Okay. And then little bit of onion we'll save some for the fresh but I think if we put a little bit of onion in there it'll also give it like a nice flavor it'll bake nicely and I like onion a lot too so we put the red onion on these are like party nachos <laughs> okay. don't go too crazy on the onion and then we'll finish it off with the chicken without chicken I will put it there no nacho goes untouched I should really focus it on the top too all right so now we're gonna put those in to kind of warm melt all of the above we're making the guacamole so she kind of I'll blow the guacamole recipe but she kind of uses a fork peel these a little earlier so I'm trying to turn a little bit. She uses a masher. We're using a fork. Um, which it mashes pretty well actually. It's my first time making guacamole. My sister makes a really good guacamole. I should ask for her recipe but it got a little late. All right. So now we're going to squeeze in some lime juice. I love this thing too, this little squeezer. It's like my favorite thing ever. And then we are going to do another one. And lime juice is my favorite thing. I use this on fajitas. I use it on everything. It's so tasty. Okay, now that we've squished, we're going to add our ingredients. So we have a little bit of onion. And we are going to. I'm going to use this to mix everything in. So, got the onions, and then we are going to add a little cilantro, which we love the cilantro. Mix that all together. Holy guacamole, looks so good at the restaurant. And we'll put in some tomatoes, nice and chopped. All together. Mm -mm. Smells good too. 
And then we're gonna put a little bit of sea, uh, green onion in it. Yes. We have you like green onions, so. That's what we're gonna do. Mix it all together, and then we're gonna add a little salt and pepper. Let me wash my hand real quick. Mm -mm -mm. Just to make sure everything's looks good. Okay, now we are going to do a little salt and a little less pepper. <laughs> I'm really excited to try this because my sister made guacamole once and it was actually really good. And I'm really picky because sometimes guac just looks not good to me. Alright, so now it's ready to glob on to our nachos. So taking the chips out of the oven, now we are going to just garnish with the rest of the stuff. So we're going to put a little more onion on, but not too much because I think we don't like, like you know so much onion on it. Focus on the center. And then we have a little bit of green onion left over from our guac. Okay. And then let's see here. So he kind of just claws. Let's see. We have this little pepper. <laughs> um, we, okay, it looks good. It smells good, but again, we're not like super, you know, nervous. I mean, we like it, but also, you know, like, what is it? And then we're going to do, he just kind of like, he has like a mound of nachos. Ours is more <laughs> flat nachos, I guess, but we're gonna mound it on like his because I feel like that's how you do nachos. So no one can come for me and be like, it looks, it looks dry, your nachos. <laughs> and then we got this weird sour cream. It came in this little pouch, but I put it in a bowl because I was like kind of scared to just squirt it all on there. So, we're gonna do our little sour cream, I guess. <laughs> I feel like we should put more on there, but you know, if we want more, we can add more. And then he kind of just garnishes it with cilantro. So, does that look like nachos? <laughs> All right, well, you know, we'll see how these taste. They look good, we'll see how they taste. All right, guys, this is our final product right there. It looks so tasty, so yummy. I'm gonna try and eat this before it gets cold. It's like kind of fresh out of the oven, but we'll see. It looks good and it looks colorful. No bland nachos here. <laughs> Always a marathon to get here, but we got here. All right, guys. Moment of truth. Let's just dig in because I don't know if this is hot, cold. I'm actually trying a little guac. Like a little guac. That's how excited I am about it. I don't even like guac. I'm trying a little guac. The cheese is amazing. The cheese? So good. Like I usually don't even Eat the cheese. care about the cheese. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I usually mess it up. Honestly, this guac is really tasty. I can see why people like it with the nachos. Mm -hmm. and, but I've tried guac at restaurants and it's not good. Mm-hmm. What? Mm -hmm. And the corn and the onion. Avocados are expensive, so in restaurants, you know, they mix it up with other stuff. Oh, really? What? It's not fresh, just mm. avocado with so many other things in it. Oh my god. <laughs> yeah, these chips and cheese and chicken. I love the corn and the onion like melted in there. I love the the um, pepper. Oh. This is the best nachos I've ever had. Oh my god, me too! And I love nachos. But nachos have let me down at restaurants so many times. Mm, mm, mm. I like the onion. Mm. The little peppers are good too. The chicken is good. Mm. We have not eaten since like 11. <laughs> it's like 8.30. I mean, we didn't eat at all. We didn't have a little snack or anything. We were going, going, just going. <laughs> I'm saying, you're not lazy. <laughs> you know what it is? It's like 
when our doctor appointment today, which is usually my lazy days. But all of a sudden he's like, your baby could be here like in, like in a few weeks. And I'm like, oh my God, we have so much to do. I have to pack a hospital bed. We did a car seat. I have so much to edit. I feel like I have so much to film. I'm like, I want to film so much before she gets here. I kind of went, not in panic mode, but I kind of went into like, okay, time to like work. Because yeah. we sadly lost a week or two. Mm hmm I don't know in my head, I'm thinking like end of September, like I have all of September. Mm -hmm. And I was thinking like, no, like we'd be ready like September 1st, basically. So, which is good. It's not like, you know, it's not like we're not ready, but it's also at the same time like, okay, we need to get everything around just to make sure if she were to come tomorrow. But she could come tomorrow and she'd be six and a half pounds, so she'd be a pretty healthy baby. <laughs> yeah, she's, she's ready. Mm -hmm. <laughs> the corn was so good. Mm-hmm. This is really good. We were snacking a little bit on the cheese. Like the chips and cheese. Oh my god. So, so good. Are you able to get... Yeah. I like all the toppings though. Like I do with like the corn and the onion and the green onion on it. Like the ones where the cheese are hiding below. Because <laughs> mm -hmm. I didn't think I liked the top, so I kind of did the layer for me and the bomb, but I like the top. Mm. It's the first time. Mm hmm. I've made it. I'm telling you, no restaurant sounds good to me. Which sucks because, like, cooking is a lot. Like, it takes a lot to cook sometimes, but I'd rather just cook. Like, I'm craving our schnitzel again. I'm craving, like, you know, and the chicken and rice. Like, even today, we'd normally go to Benihana, but I'm like, you know what? Our fried rice was so much better. Like, I'll make it this week. I'll make it with this weekend for my family. Like, <laughs> I mean, the amount of rice I ate. <laughs> I know. I was like. I bet oh, Hana, you have like two spoons. I ate like half of their tiny bowl. Like this little, <laughs> and I ate half of it. Here I had a big. There was like three of those. We just have that for dinner. Fried rice one night. Hmm. But it tastes nothing to do with the meat. It tastes like two minutes to the meat, too. And then when you haven't eaten all day, you're just like, oh, I feel so good to eat. You could actually do the chicken even like this. Mm -hmm. Marinate it like this. And With the same seasoning? I usually associate that with like Mexican dishes, but yeah, it could be good. Or I guess what you said is like to find out more of the spices they use. Like yeah, so you make that sauce, but I've seen some simple hibachi spicy sauce recipes. So mm. oh my god, I don't know why when we got home it was like this like sprint. <laughs> it's like our first time like both of us sitting down. Ooh. So good. So All those little good. flavors, like yeah, like that little spicy pepper has yeah. a really good flavor. Yeah, I'm surprised. Even like the little corn in there and stuff, like I, I like love the corn. Mm-hmm. Mm, those little peppers are good. Mm. What are they? They're not jalapeno. Habanero or no? No, they were something weird, like serranos or something. Oh, yeah. Right. <laughs> Serranto. I don't know what it is about grocery stores, but every time I go in there, I feel like I'm going to faint. <laughs> like, every grocery store we go into, and I love the grocery store. Like, I love being in there. It's not like I'm trying to get out of there. But yeah, but okay. usually it's, like, after a long day of being out and after lunch. I guess, yeah. And then the foot doctor today. <laughs> it was a little, We had a really busy day. We have to decide on our pediatrician, like, this week. He has to come to the hospital. We know what place we're going. We just have to like pick one. Oh my god! I can't wait to just go to Target because I need some stuff for the hospital bed and just get more like baby stuff. Like oh, oh, that big baby cart I had. That's all coming. I ordered that today. So like the what crib goes? room or bottle warmers, like all that stuff. What goes in the hospital bed? There's a bunch of, I, I just googled a bunch of lists, like Baby List actually has one, like what to pack in your hospital bed, like a lot of stuff, like you can pack pajamas, toiletries, chargers, obviously stuff for the baby, like diapers, the going home outfit, like. Is that when you go tra when we travel? Yeah, basically, because <laughs> we, we don't know how long we'll be there. We always have those cases ready to go. <laughs> yeah, that'll be literally us. It'll be like that girl I remember on TikTok, she like packed like snacks and thank you gifts for the nurses. She was packing the most. I was like, okay girl, I love it. I mean, I'd rather pack more than enough, so that's why I want to pack like now. 
because we want the bag just like ready to go, you know? <laughs> we have our car seat. I feel so much, I feel so much better with it in the car. I'm like I really do feel like I can have her like any day. That's how it feels. So I'm like, <gasps> I mean, he'll just stay in for a few more weeks at least. But I think mid September. Mm. And to me earlier. Well, I feel her trying to get out. Four weeks from now. Really? She'll be my size. Like she'll be like eight. Yeah. Something. I wish I'd come then. So what are we now? We're in the first week of August. Mm hmm So it'll be after the first week of September. Yeah. Then she'll be like ready <sighs> to pop. But she's doing so well on all her ultrasound checks. I always say how great everything's going, which is always such a relief. Mm. She's already doing math. She knows English. <laughs> I mean, she might. She's got a big head, so she might have a big brain in there. We love big headed babies, though. I was a big headed baby, so. I bet the nurse today, that was so <laughs> funny because she didn't know. It's the first time she was with us. Mm -hmm. So she scans the baby and they scan. Oh, yeah. <laughs> they measure the head and the femur. And she's like, is this your day? Like, what's going on here? She's like, <laughs> she you're like three weeks off. <laughs> I know. I was like, wait, what? Three weeks? So, the baby is like, she's more, she's like 92%, 95%. Everything is like above 90%. <laughs> you know, how tall she is, how big she is for the time that they gave her. Yeah. So, we think it's both. We always thought they were one week off. Like, it was actually a week before that she was conceived. And she's tall. So, she's also... So it's both things were right. She yeah. both big, naturally big, and probably a week ahead of mm -hmm. what they thought she was. But she we'll was shocked. She, I, I, I was know. worried for a second. Right, she, I had to double check. I gotta like see but what they said. she was like three weeks, I was just like, wait a minute. Me too, I was like, oh my God, so that means our baby's coming in three weeks. <laughs> like, I'm like, well, hold it. First of all, she's tall. Like, she, <laughs> she is tall. She actually is <laughs> tall. And our, the other, the doctor came in and was like, and she has like not a lot of room in there. And she moves so much, <laughs> like just constantly. But I think she'll be ready to like come out. Like I feel like she knows she's gonna be ready. Her head's down there. Like I, I, I'm, I'm visual. I'm never gonna call me crazy, but I just feel like it's because she's gonna come out easy. She, she didn't know. Like she kind of just knows because she doesn't hurt me now. Never hurts. Never in my ribs or anything like that. She kind of knows her little like angles, even though it's tight in there. Like she knows. So. I'm excited about all of it. I guess that's the other advantage of a big head. <laughs> like gravity pulls it down. Right. Because it is the heaviest like part of our body. Right. Our head. That's why when you fall, the head is like what gets strong as impact. So they, her head is kind of like, it's, just, it's like her anchor. Mm -hmm. Which that's what you want, is the head to be down for the mm -hmm. bird. You always ask the doctor all the questions. So cute. Yeah, I'm like, so what? curious. I have a hundred more questions, but I'm holding myself back. Really? Mm -hmm. yeah, I mean, it's, it's so, so good. I'm so curious. About but it's so funny. He always does like the, like you like technical. You always get technical. You're like, oh, they're machine. Is like they look at, so they see the umbilical cord and they see the flow going one way and the flow going another way, and it has different colors. So it looks like this beautiful spiral of blue and red. Mm -hmm. That's cool. And I'm like, how does the machine know that which one and what? <laughs> it's like it's really sophisticated. <laughs> no, it is. That machine is insane. That's why we go to two doctors. Some people are like, "Oh, why are you at two doctors? Like, it's a high risk." Like, no, and he's actually that not our doctor. Like, um, he has nothing to do with the delivery or anything like that. But he's he's he works so, with this. Yeah. When we when we found out that she was pregnant, we were like, we need to find a doctor. We need to verify this with some you know ultrasound and all those things. Yeah, because we had gone on our honeymoon and we were telling people, but we. I mean, we took pregnancy tests, but, you know, he wasn't convinced. <laughs> I'm like, they're pretty accurate, but <laughs> you're like, we need to, and I agree. I'm like, we have to figure out. <laughs> and we didn't know where to go. We tried to call the fertility clinic that helped us with our tests and stuff like that. They never called us back. So yeah. we're like randomly Googling. So, so I was looking and I found like basically the best imaging center in our area. So they have the most amazing equipment and everything. So most of the times people that end up over there it's people that have any kind of issue complications because mm -hmm. they have I mean they can see everything and measure everything in ways that 
I mean, the other doctor, it's like going back 20 years is what he can see over there. Yeah, they just can't see much on that ultrasound. And he, so, they, prefer, they recommend each other. Like they so talk those heads, so he yeah. was the first one yeah. we saw. He was the first person. And then he was like, oh, no, but we don't do deliveries. So then he recommended the doctor that we go to now yeah. that does the delivery. But we just love... Then he only does high-risk pregnancies, and I'm not high-risk, so I can't... Because we liked him, but Yeah, we really like him. him. Like, I wasn't high-risk, so... But we can go to him for the ultrasound. It was really cool. So we kind of benefited from the fact that they have such amazing equipment. Yeah. You see the 3D pictures we get of her face and mm -hmm. everything. And he's just overall just so nice, so we stayed there. So nice, like always trying to get her to move. He's the one who offered me food to like help her. And we have the best doctors. I was telling him say, like, I'm amazed by all doctors, even urgent care. The guy who did my foot thing, I'm like, how does he know to like do my foot thing, but also like, you know, do like pap smears and do head exams and do eye, like he really is like a cranial nerve examiner in real life. Like he can just do everything. And I know that's like why they go to school, but I'm like, how are they so, or a good actor delivering babies? I mean, how does he just do that? Did you ask the guy today to collaborate with you on ASMR? <laughs> no, but I thought about it in there. He had some good, and he was good ASMR. I was just like, wow, this is like ASMR vibes. I was seeing so many doctors today, and they always thought my, my blood pressure was good, knock on wood. And so I was like, wow, you have really good blood pressure. That's like my flex in life, I think. Because <laughs> I feel like people do struggle with high blood pressure. And I just feel very fortunate that I don't because I feel like I probably should, would, I don't know. I don't know. I don't, I don't even know. know what causes it. I actually don't either. I don't think it is, like people say, like it's your diet and stuff, like bigger people have high blood pressure. But I also think it's kind of genetics. This is so good. <laughs> like digging out everything. Hang on, oh. a little <laughs> opening here for you. Mm. Oh, <laughs> I just saw this. <laughs> I don't know what is that? <laughs> mm. So the whole world is sitting on it. <laughs> <And cucumber. laughs> I'm curious, I cucumber. That's crazy. That's like cucumber. What's like poking out? Preferably. Ooh, that pepper was spicy. Oh. Oh, got a good one. Oh yeah. There's all the good stuff in here. Like the Grand Canyon. <laughs> Never ending nacho. Cheese is lava. Mm. <laughs> what? Was it that game? It's gonna be bedtime after this, babe. No. <laughs> you have like a thing where you just have to like watch TV before bed. No, it's not that. It's like there's a something in between. Oh. Because, I mean, watching something is a meditative act, like you don't think, you just kind of watch mm -hmm. it. What are we watching? We're watch. hmm? What are we watching? The one we watched last night was good because you don't think. <laughs> like, I was kind of paying attention, kind of not, so it's kind of good. Like the ultimatum? Were you into it or no? Hmm? I mean, the guy was going to propose. Hmm. <laughs> we're, we're so behind. We don't really want to watch it, but we have nothing else to watch, so. It's hard to even figure out if it's real or not. It does seem kind of scripted. Some parts and some people seem kind of like yeah. placed there. Right, no. <laughs> okay. Porn is so good. I had to make <laughs> extra. Mm -hmm. You love porn on the top. I like it too. But you love it. Yeah, these nachos were mm, so, so good. Better than cheesecake. Because mm -mm -mm. the cheese is really good quality. The avocado is everything. Fresh. Mm -mm -mm. <laughs> mm. Well. This is my made it for me. Is there anything cor corn or something? Oh, there might be. People like it. There's like an aesthetic to it. Like remember Johnny Depp in Secret Window, how he'd always be eating corn on the cob. That was like an aesthetic. Actually, I think he buried his wife in the garden and then ate the corn that grew from it. 
Because I remember at the end, that was like his thing. It's like he was eating the corn. <laughs> people are turning on Johnny Depp now. Now that court documents have come out about stuff like he hid and sealed, people are kind of like turning against him now. Isn't that always the case, though? People always root for someone and then... Well, I didn't know what was happening. I don't really know. I don't really understand. I think some court documents came out that he wanted sealed that kind of said, like, he... He did admit to maybe, like, kicking her, altering photos. Like, there was some stuff, like, not in his favor. Hmm. So now everyone's like, damn, like, he lied, and he tried to get these documents sealed, and... I don't know. We'll find out. It's been pretty quiet about it, but... Whew! One more, I think I'm done after this. Mmm. What would you rate the nachos? I mean, it's the best nachos I ever had. Really? Yeah, and I'm not a fan of nachos, but this is good. All right. Like everything. The cheese was amazing. Yeah. The guac was amazing. I think when we don't film, we can get it all faster so we can get it really fresh, but once the dish is done, it's like taking pictures for Instagram and taking thumbnails and setting up the eating area. <laughs> like it takes, Basically like 10 to 15 minutes, so then the food gets a little... Not that this was cold, but it sits for a little bit. Yeah, there's something about eating it right at that moment. Or, um... I guess we could have had more... Kept more... Like some of the cheese just on the... Mm-hmm. Warm. And then melted it over. Mm -hmm. Lemon lime. Oh okay. my god. I love these. Let me have one more. <laughs> nachos are my fave, and they're really, really hard for me to find good nachos anywhere. So, I give it a 10 out of 10. How is the clock? Mm -hmm. <laughs> I love avocado. I was into it for a minute and I got over it. Kind of weird texture. <laughs> I don't mind it. I'll eat it. If you like feed it to me, I'll be like, okay. Well, I'll never just like cut it up on my own. Yeah, I, mean, I like creamy stuff, so. Carpet. I am gonna carpet tomorrow. Another busy week. Like every week is just so busy. I'm trying to schedule stuff is like insane. It's gonna be really busy until the baby gets here and then we can rest. Then we can relax. <laughs> Everyone say just wait just like before and like after. <laughs> Once the baby's here, you get a lot of sleep. <laughs> Just peaceful snuggles. And calm. I do feel like, not that it'll slow down, but I feel like I'll have to slow down for the video. Like I can't do all these videos in one day, you know what I mean? Like I can do like one video to a couple videos a day or something. Like a couple videos for my day of filming. It's gonna change a lot. But I do feel like it'll kind of help me like slow down. Yeah. At least yeah. the first few months, like just adjusting and. I don't think it'll even like think about it, you know what I yeah, mean? Yeah, I don't think there. It just happens, like you sit there with the baby in your hand for an hour, mm -hmm. she falls asleep, she falls asleep, whatever, like you know what I mean, you don't even... And we have like each other, so I feel it like... It just happens. Yeah. Because we were watching a TikTok of like a work from home mom today and she was like working and taking their baby, but it didn't look like she had any help, like at least we both work from home, so mm -hmm. if we need a minute, we have to it go It would be the worst event to like go nine to five and not see the baby oh my god it's all so, day and then yeah. you come back and the baby's asleep and that yeah, i know that's why those people stay at home moms like they do have a really tough job 
it's like when they like get divorced and then they're like you don't deserve anything it's like if you raise the kids like that's so hard to do on your own you know like of course working is hard but like no either way it's like a lose-lose because you you're either all day with the baby alone which is hard yeah or all day away from the baby at yeah. work which is hard both, oh yeah both things are hard but i know we're pretty lucky that we have flexibility but yeah, I'm excited for our journey. These nachos were so good. It's like so late, so it's like weird of eating so late, but it tastes so good. Good thing we had that breakfast this morning. You didn't have a lot though. I had a lot. Mine was heavy. I did. Breakfast? Mm -hmm. Oh. I mean, those bagels are dense. I like the bagel dense. We did it. <laughs> All right, guys. This was a lot. We actually ate so much of it, though. Like, I don't know if you can tell. Like, we kind of scraped the bottom there. I scraped the bottom. <laughs> but, um, yeah. We also opened up a Gatorade inside the store. Do you guys do that? Like, open up. I do that all the time now. Now that I'm pregnant, I'm like, whatever. I don't care. But, like, I always open it up in the store to drink because I was so there. I thought I was going to pass out when I got in there, so I got the Gatorade. As long as you pay. <laughs> I see it over there. I was just like, oh. I wonder if that's true for everything, though. Like, can you open up a drumstick? Like, ice cream? <laughs> can you start eating some cheese? You can. Maybe not eggs and milk, but... <laughs> not milk? You can't chug it? Oh, ice cream. Mm -hmm. oh, that's such good ice cream today. Mm -hmm. Blue Bunny. <laughs> Those <Oreo> commercials. <laughs> oh, yeah. He got the big mm -hmm. one, too. <laughs> I don't know why my voice sounds like I'm a dog. Okay, guys. Thanks for watching. Try this. So good. So delicious. Ten out of ten. Ten out of ten. <laughs> yeah, twelve. Good day, I guess. Today is a long day, guys. But a good day. Productive day. We got so much done. Well, very good day. So good. Our baby is almost here. I feel it. <laughs> All right. See you guys soon. Bye.